So what are angels made of? Great. What what do they what do they look like? Okay. And yeah, tell me more about their I guess it would be their ontology, the okay, ontology yeah, of an a, angel. Right, what are they? What are that's, they? Yeah, what are what is their being? St. Gregory and St. Augustine uh, both say that the name angel, Angelus, talks about what they do, what is their mission, not who they are. Angelus means messenger. Hmm. That's the Latin word. It's a Greek word that the, that the Latin language also picks up, Angelus, Angelos, Angelus. So they are messengers. They are the intermediaries between God and mankind. They bring important messages to earth. Uh, they also are involved... We learn from the fathers of the church, reflecting on the Holy Scriptures, that they're also involved in the creation of the universe. They are in the hierarchy of being between God himself and the Holy Trinity and the created material order. The angels stand in between those two. They are created beings, mm -hmm. but they are not material. So you said, what are they? What is their ontology? What is their being? They are pure spirits pure created spirits, and they have a rational nature like humans do, meaning that they have a intellect and a free will. An intellect and a will is what makes them rational like humans are rational. So can they pick and choose what body to put on in order with if yeah. God gives them the, I don't know, the, the power to do it? I mean, do they all have the power to embody themselves mm. in order to do certain errands for God or if they're a demonic spirit to do an errand for the evil one? They only do God's will. They they perfectly do God's will. The holy angels, uh, this kind of goes back to a previous conversation we've had about fallen angels and holy good mm -hmm. angels, the, 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 the holy angels we call them. The holy angels are perfectly aligned to the will of God from the moment of their creation after they chose in that one perfect act of their will, um, a little bit of a tangent, because they have no bodies, because they're pure spirits, they're perfect intellects and perfect wills. That is, they know everything they're supposed to know uh, when they look upon the face of God. And they have a perfect will in that they make one choice for God or against God, and everything else follows after mm -hmm. that. It's a perfect act of their, of their rational will. I'm a, that must be so nice, by the way. I know, right? Why can't we? Why can't I mean? Perfectly I, aligned. Obviously, we're going to have it in heaven. We're going to have it in heaven. Please I know. God. But every day we're making a million choices, and half of them are bad. It's like because we don't see, we don't see or know with that kind of clarity mm -hmm. because we are composite beings with with bodies along with our mm -hmm. immortal souls. So so we don't have that same kind of perfection in the way that our intellects and our wills work. Um, so can they choose to put on a body that they, they have, like the book of Tobit, by the way, right. which is so everyone loves the book of Tobit, and yes, but the, the Archangel Raphael, there. yeah, the wonderful Archangel Raphael to come and be a matchmaker. Yes. It's so the beautiful. love lost That's right. folks in Tobit. And, and they, my understanding is Raphael presented himself as a relative Yes, in order to matchmake a couple. And yes. he went undercover as yes. a human being and he lied. I mean, again, I don't know if you would agree that it's a, it's technically a lie, but he represented himself as someone he was not and in the, order to meet, get two people to meet and fall in love. Yes. So when the angels show up here on earth, as it were, um, at the Annunciation of our Lord's Incarnation to the Blessed Virgin Mary or Zechariah in the temple, the Annunciation of the Conception of St. John the Baptist, um, whenever angels show up, people see them. And presumably that's not just somehow a trick of the mind that, that the angels mm -hmm. affect, but it's also a reality in in their in a physical body, which they can take up, they can assume. And it's because the angelic world has this access to the material world. Mm. All, already from the beginning of the universe, uh, the fathers tell us uh, that in the creation of the universe, God who works through these, these hierarchical and instrumental means, he used the angels to whip up the matter of the created material universe. So that's a why, cool idea. So why couldn't they uh, take up the material that that looks like a human body and inhabit it for a while, so as to appear to us? You know. So what, you're saying that. So the you're saying that the early church fathers they theorize. Are they speaking with full confidence that God used the angels as instruments to create the world as we know it? Yes. So they theorized, and that goes along with the understanding of cosmology, how yeah. the world works, how philosophy works, 
what it, what natural philosophy is, um, they understood that that there is this wonderful hierarchy of being from, as I said, God himself at the very pinnacle of it, God who is immaterial, immortal, uh, without without um, anything outside of him. And when he acted outside of himself to create the visible order of the material world, the universe in which we live, and to create us, he also created the angels. So the Fourth Lateran Council, which is the beginning of the 1200s, said that defined, um, of course, this, this is much later than the early church mm-hmm. fathers, but the reflection of the church upon scriptural truths and the realities that, of Christian doctrine continues to unfold through time. So the Fourth Lateran Council said that God created the angels, and also there's a part of that council that says that he created the angels before he created mankind. Mm. So, so there's an order to the way that God created things, and the angels helped with that ordering and with that creation. So again, that's all theoretical, but not not purely speculative. Yes. It's not just someone's sort of imaginative idea. It's based in the truths that we know from philosophy and theology. So in this room right now, presumably there's at least three angels. Yes, which is a crazy. Maybe trip. four, because the some of the some of the wonderful fathers of the church say that a priest gets another one at oh, his ordination. Of course, sorry, Father. I, I, could, cut, I hope cut that's you true. Short. I, could, I could use a few more than that. Um, that's wonderful. So. And and have you had an experience with your angels? Gosh, 